So just to recap, uh, you might be familiar with this. We covered it in, in some of the earlier series, uh, but for those that might be attending for the first time, uh, we want to make sure you understand uh, what uh, we will be referring to. Uh, this basic UDI-DI is simply a group identi identifier for uh, very similar uh, medical devices. So it's, it's like a family name, if you will. So that particular um, identifier, we'll call it a parent, has to have at least one child. So when you do identify a basic UDI-DI, uh, it does have to have you know, one device connected to it, but it can have multiples. It can have 20, 50, 100, you know, technically it could have a thousand um, different devices, all part of, of that uh, particular basic UDI-DI group. Now, um, it, for every individual device, uh, it has to have one and only one parent. So you can't have a particular device sitting in two different groups. So there are some rules about how you create this. But some things to remember there would be that the intended purpose, the risk class, the essential design and manufacturing characteristics and the certification, all those have to be the same for every device in the group. And then in addition to that, there are some uh, attributes uh, that are reported into Udemed and uh, we'll touch on you know, those in just a second. Um, but all those particular attributes have to have the same value for each device in that particular group. Now, how do you go about creating this? The, the burden is on the actual manufacturer to uh, create this uh, basic UDI-DI. Um, each of the, uh, the standards, GS1, HIBIC, ICC, BBA, and IFA, I know it's a <laughs> alphabet soup there, but uh, each of those um, issuing entities have guidelines on how you create uh, this particular value. Uh, the European Union has put some limits on that, uh, 25 characters maximum, it has to have a check digit. Um, now, the other thing that you wanna remember is that basic UDI is created for uh, MDR and IVDR devices. So those medical devices that comply with regulation and those in, in vitro diagnostic devices that comply with regulation um, will have to have a basic UDI-DI. You might have heard the term Udemed-DI or Udemed-ID. Those particular terms are only for legacy devices and there's not a grouping uh, concept for legacy devices. The Udemed-DI uh, is one-to-one -one for a Udemed ID. We won't go into the attributes connected to a basic UDI DDI, but this is the list. Uh, they, they're grouped around um, some information about the model, some information about the organization. You should have received your single registration number for your manufacturer by now. Uh, if you're non-European based, you'll have to have an authorized rep. Uh, that entity will also have an SRN. Um, there's a number of fields about regulatory. And then on the right-hand side, you see a number of characteristics. So this, uh, the second grouping there would be uh, uh, appropriate for medical device. And the third group down in the bottom that would be for in vitro diagnostic. But all those answers and all these values that you see would have to be the same for every device that inside uh, medical device, um, uh, basic UDI-DI.